Black Homie is a rapper who has been building up a fair amount of momentum over the past few years to the point where he has seen a huge cult following type of success that we have seen amongst uh, not too many rappers, I would say, recently. Not in the same way that you see for a rapper like Mac. I feel like the type of audience that Mac has is very different to the kind of audience that someone like an Earl Sweatshirt has. Like, sure, yeah, it's very niche and mostly internet-based. You don't tend to see many people, you know, uh, showing huge amounts of love for Earl Sweatshirt when you just talk to people generally in real life. But he has built up quite a name for himself, I think, with the Odd Future, uh, you know, times and the, his links to other rappers that are pretty credible and pretty, you know, uh, loved and things like that. He, I would still say he has a relatively cult following, but it's a different kind. Similarly with an injury reserve too, it just feels different to what Mac has got. Mac has got this elusive, mysterious, creature-like personality who doesn't show his face. He doesn't show too much online. You don't get the lyrics. You don't get the lyrics. You go on Genius, no lyrics for you. That's how cool Mac Homie is. And to be fair, recently, since signing to Griselda, I think he's been putting out some of his best work. I don't necessarily think it's got anything to do with signing to Griselda or being affiliated with Griselda. I just think it just so happens that my favourite Mac albums have been coming out lately, including this new one, including this one. The Lens Cho Hot Candles, Hot Candles, definitely serves its purpose very well for a fan like me or a, 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 maybe a skeptic like me. Like I say, maybe it's time to go back to some of those earlier Mac albums, but I do think since Pray for Haiti and this one here, he's been stepping up his game. And the main reason why it serves its purpose is because it's only like 23 minutes. So if I were to, you know, dedicate myself to a listening experience. I'm only sat there for 20 minutes listening to this and to be fair, it actually works really well for its length. I think it starts incredibly well with the track Laboo, which has this excellent sample loop that goes across the whole track and keeps going and going and going. And I just absolutely adore it. I think it sounds stellar. I think the hook that he brings as well, which is pretty subtle, pretty restrained, but I actually think he works really well with what he's doing here. And then separation of the sheep and the goats, which is a great title for a song. I love that title. Is probably the best track, or maybe head to head with another track that I haven't mentioned yet. But love this one too. Think the instrumental once again is an absolute corker, I tell thee. It's an absolute corker. And I think the way he's singing on the hook in, I think, what is Spanish or a different language, not entirely sure, don't want to get that wrong. But uh, he sounds like most deaf. He sounds like most deaf. Listen to some of the tracks from The Ecstatic and then listen to this track. It's a very, very eerily similar track to something most deaf would do. And I love most deaf. So these early moments on the album are already giving me great, great, great expectations for what's to come. I think the track Le Jean Sal is another really good one. It takes the album in an even further creative direction with the production. I think the really weird bell sound that's in the instrumental is really odd and eerie. It reminds me of something that you'd expect from some kind of like medieval you know, like film or medieval like TV show that's trying to bring back the past in a really unique way. Definitely get those kinds of vibes. A uh, Magnum Band remix comes in the middle of these tracks. Um, I definitely think this is a bit of a slowing down of the momentum because those three tracks I've mentioned already, I think are excellently produced. They are excellent in terms of production. But this one just reminds me of any other song that you'd hear on a Griselda album. Now I've, I, I, I've been a fan of Griselda, particularly Benny and Conway over the years, but I think when the album's already giving you really inventive and creative production, to hear a track like this kind of ushered in the middle of it just feels a bit like of a, uh, I don't know, a bit of a, a bit of a letdown because I don't think the album was really setting itself up for songs like this. And when it pops up, I'm just a bit like, yeah, okay. And a track like Traditional is a bit of a letdown too. This comes later on the album, but it's so short. It's so short. I know this is a short album in general, but like you could have fleshed this track out, Mr. Mac, Mr. Homie. This could have been a longer track. It just feels like it's skint, scant, 
and really thin, just doesn't really do much. But there are some really great moments in terms of like the emotional impact that he brings to the table here in tracks like Wooden Nickels and then also the final track, which is called Self Love or Self Love. Wooden Nichols, I want to mention first. I think Self Love is a better track, but I'll get to that in a minute. But even so, Wolf, Wolf, Wolf? Wooden Nichols, my goodness, is very reflective. I really like the line as well where he says, They call you selfish anyway, so you may as well basically just live up to the uh, self fulfilling prophecy that is thrown on you. Regardless of people understanding where he's coming from, he's kind of just labeled that anyway. So he's trying to show that, you know, actually there's a bit more to the story, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, I think the instrumental is so, so lush and uh, really, really on point. Well, the way it plays out at the end, too, the really like soft jazz instrumentation just kind of going on and on and on for like a minute and a half i think that was such a good choice because it really lingers it really makes you think about the words he was saying before that really good way to close out the song but then self love bruh is a beautiful closer my friend not to compare it to the song by mavi just because that song is also called self-love but i just mean mavi in general i think this reminds me a lot of it reminds me of those um i guess abstracty hip-hop rappers at the moment you could even say earl who are going into a more introspective direction and giving us these kind of like jazzy soulful instrumentals that feel quite lo-fi feel a bit rough around the edges I could even point to a navy blue, I could point to a mic. I think he's taking some kind of inspiration from some of those or following a similar blueprint to some of those guys. And totally doing it in his own way too. I mean, this track is very unique for a hip hop song. You don't tend to get tracks like this that are really like, you know, poignant and looking into how you need to take care of yourself and how you need to look after yourself. To the point where he's talking about like his joints and you know his bones and his lungs and things like that like it's so specific to talk about these things in a rap song to the point where it's like you know you need to protect yourself it's not just you know a wu-tang track like protect your neck which is a great song by the way but this just goes even deeper than that and is basically like no no bro you don't want to get out you don't want to get arthritis and it even got me sitting back and thinking like shit maybe i need to take care of myself maybe it's the, 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 my joints could be on the way out one day, I don't know. It, it, it was a really weird moment where I was just like, man, he's really getting me to think about how I need to look after myself. I can't p picture a rap song that's done that ever. So props to Matt Kami for this track. And a really good album. I mean, like I say, there were a few moments that just felt a bit like undercooked. I mean, it is a short album, so that's probably an obvious criticism to say. But I do feel like traditional just goes so nowhere to the point where I just wonder why it's even there. And uh, yeah, I think maybe some of like the interludes and stuff like that, they were, they, were, they were all over this album. I haven't even touched on any of them, but he really goes in on all of these like short 15 second little clips. And I thought it probably could have come together a bit better than it did. But I still think this is very good. And Mac Omi, for me, personally, as a, as, a, as, a, as a listener, as an individual listener, I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, objectively or anything like that. I'm not talking about your experience with him. But in my experience with him, he is on the rise. I think this year he's had a really good year. And I haven't even mentioned that Kate Trinada track, but bloody hell, that's a really good track. Seriously, if you've not heard the Kate Trinada collaboration, uh, Pay for Haiti. Uh, listen to it. It is fantastic. One of my favorite tracks of the year. And just again, showing the rise of Matt Comey at the moment for me, again, as a listener, for me personally, I think he's doing a great job and putting out really good music. So yeah, I think a seven out of 10 is where I'm at at the moment. Very, very good. Very worth your time. It is good to see that I am slowly coming around on a rapper who has been getting a lot of buzz over time. Definitely think the production on this album is really, really killer too. I think he's stepping up his game in so many ways and I am glad to see it. So thank you for watching my review. Hopefully you agree. Hopefully you uh, liked what I had to say in this video. Hopefully you subscribe as well if you haven't already. Would love to see more people in the comments in my videos every time. Thank you as always. Uh, have a good day and goodbye.